I am really, really disappointed. The Microsoft 365 developer program used to be an incredible way for learners to get access to, well, the Microsoft 365 platform and just get creating and learning how things work. For me, all of my courses are based around the learner signing up to the developer account and working through my course at their own pace. On the 25th of January 2024, Microsoft announced changes to the program that specifically exclude people without a Microsoft Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. That costs over $3,000 per year. So what now? Well, if you don't have a Microsoft Visual Studio Enterprise subscription, you can no longer sign up for the developer program. Fine. Unless you're in one of these specific categories that I'll put on the screen now, that's essentially no longer an option, which, as I say, is incredibly disappointing from my, from my perspective. I understand why Microsoft might have done it. It's difficult to ensure that people signing up are real people, real learners, real developers, and they can't guarantee that people aren't using it to create bots or, or generally misuse the program. I think they could have maybe done it differently rather than just making people sign up for $3,000 per year uh, Visual Studio, but this is the world we live in today. So we have a couple of options. You can either sign up for a paid subscription, which actually is what Microsoft suggests. You sign up for a paid subscription, and if you're following one of my courses, you'll need at least Microsoft 365 Business Premium in order to make use of all the features we talk about in the course. It's the lowest way to purchase a subscription that allows the use of Enter ID Premium P1, Intune, Windows Enterprise, all that kind of, well, Windows Pro, all that kind of stuff. It costs around 20 bucks a month, and with that, you've got access to everything you need to get started. One license, so be aware of that. So the other option is to sign up for a trial. Now, again, you need to sign up for something that includes Entra P1, Intune, and Windows Pro, Windows Enterprise. But these trials seem to last for a maximum of one month now. It used to be 90 days, now it's one month. And the other worrying thing about this is that it seems to sign you up for a 12-month subscription if you don't cancel. In the past, trials would automatically cancel, and you didn't need to sign up with a credit card. Now you need a card to sign up, and it will automatically convert if you don't cancel. So that's really worrying from my perspective, especially when I'm encouraging learners to sign up for a trial in order to take my course. So let's start with option one, buying Microsoft 365 Business Premium. We'll jump into a browser and I'm just going to type Microsoft 365. I'll start typing correctly. Microsoft 365 Business Premium. I'll show you the one I'm talking about. So it's this one here, and you can see in the UK it's £18.10 per month. So we'll just click on the first result there we get on Bing. You can see these nice two people talking in a closed coffee shop by the looks of it, but there you go. So £18.10 per user per month. It's an annual subscription and it an automatically renews. It doesn't include VAT, so you need to add VAT on there as well. Or you can buy it for £21.72 per month with a monthly commitment. Now, this allows you to have access to one terabyte of storage with OneDrive. It gives you Word, Excel, PowerPoint. So it does give you all of the features of a business license. And really, it's designed for organizations with fewer than 300 users. And in your test tenant, it's ideally going to be just the one because £21 a month is quite a lot of money. So if we scroll down, this is what you get. Mainly, we need Enter ID and Intune. The rest of it for my courses isn't really that important. Maybe Defender is quite important for some of it. And then that's the features you get. It's a case of choosing buy and download, choosing how many people you're purchasing the license for, deciding whether you're purchasing it for a one, don't need an expert here, either one year or one month. And we also need to decide how we're being billed. Obviously, if you choose one month, you're going to be billed monthly. Or if we choose one year, we could buy it for a year for £217 without VAT. So very simple to buy to, to buy that. Microsoft are very, very good at allowing you to spend money. So when we choose next, we create the sign-in and we go ahead. Bear in mind that at this point, 
if you choose one year commitment build monthly you're signing up for a one year subscription to microsoft 365 business premium and you have to pay monthly there's a monthly commitment there to get that price you can't for example sign up for a one year commitment at 18 pound 10 per user per month and only pay for two months you need to have those uh, those 12 month payments so that's one option and microsoft would suggest that's the right option if you want to sign up for a uh, an equivalent of the dev program i think based on the announcement that they gave in uh, in january so the alternative would be to sign up for a trial so if we take a look at the trials available to us microsoft 365 trial try for one month get microsoft 365 scroll down here choose for business because that's effectively you know intune and enter id are business technology so buying a consumer version wouldn't give us the right solution scroll down you can see business premium has a one month trial available now this in on this page the only one that makes sense the only license that makes sense is business premium because the others don't include intune and the others don't include enter id so if you were going to go for any of the ones on this page you would choose business premium let me just find the other products that are available so we're looking for pricing for enterprise then and this will show us the equivalence in the enterprise world so microsoft 365 e3 with no teams comes in at uh, 31 pounds per user per month or is free for a one month trial so let's look at option number two we'll sign up for this one month trial of enterprise e3 i'm just going to show, walk you through the sign up process so you understand exactly what steps are required and when you need to cancel it and all that kind of stuff so let's just choose next quite rightly says looks like you need to create a new account because that email address whilst it exists it isn't a microsoft account so i'm going to choose set up account i'm going to type in some information test test tester okay so i've pre i've apparently test isn't a valid name um well i'm sure someone who, who was called test would have an issue with that but um okay well dean then maybe dean's a valid name dean ellaby and i'm a tester there we go so we'll choose next and it's going to text me send a verification code to my phone which is fine so i'll just receive that and this is that number there okay now i get to choose the domain name so in this case i'm just going to call it dean ellaby test one at dot on microsoft.com i'm going to tap in a password and we'll choose next and now you can see we've got the product that i'm purchasing it says that i'm signing up for a microsoft 365 e3 trial the price is 31 pounds per user per month and i've got a maximum of 25 during a trial if i go for the 25 that takes the monthly subtotal up to 775 pounds per month now as a learner you know that's not that's not bad because it's free for the for one month we need to be sure that it doesn't charge us 775 pounds next month so i just to be safe and i'm sure you'd set up a gofundme if uh, if i didn't do this wrong and so now that's done i'm just going to choose save and one of the reasons i'm showing you how to do this i'm sure you could follow the on-screen instructions given the time i'm just showing you what might happen as you go through this process so i'm just going to let this finish loading it's actually just done a card check it's it's charged me one pound and one penny at my uh, on my card there and it's then refunded it which is good so you do get a little charge and then it refunds the charge i seem to have accidentally signed up for 775 pounds worth of um subscription there i don't know how i did that i need to watch that back that's a little terrifying but i did it as you can see it says your account is under review 
This is actually the first time I've seen it say that on my account. Uh, so let's see what happens. I'm going to choose view the status. Interesting. So as you can see, Microsoft have put my account under review. And now I'm going to need to make sure that when it does become released, I need to cancel the agreement. Otherwise, I'll be charged £775 in a month. So that's very, very concerning. I'm sure you understand from, from my perspective, but also you as learners and, and the community, when we need to sign up for these trial accounts, we need to be fairly confident that we can sign up to them and have them available to us without going into some kind of review process. So I'm really disappointed and worried about the future from a learner's perspective with regards to Microsoft's trial system and, and the way learners get access to, micro, to the Microsoft platform. Let's try it again. So I'm going to just create a new profile. I wonder if I did something wrong. I wonder. So I wonder if I did something wrong. Let's go to plans and pricing again. And this time I'm going to go down to uh, try for one month on E3. And there we go. We have that. I'm just going to tap in my password. choose next. Okay, I'm going to go with one this time rather than £775 worth. I'll add a payment method and in the card number I'm going to tap in a different card number. This card number has never been used to buy Microsoft services before so it's completely fresh to Microsoft. Okay so this time you can see rather than telling me that I was under review and couldn't buy Microsoft services for up to two days it has let me do the, the trial setup and the payment method addition fairly seamlessly there. And one of the differences between the last time that I tried this a few moments ago and this time is that I used a card that was fresh to Microsoft. It's still a valid card that I own, but it's one that I've not used to sign up for Microsoft services before. So if you have purchased Microsoft services in the past and you're signing up for a trial, if you're using the same card, they seem to care and seem to blacklist you or at least put your account under review so you can't just keep signing up with the same card every time. Now, I don't know if that's in the terms and conditions. I've not seen that, that you can't sign up for more than one trial. But you can imagine that in our scenario when we're learning the product, we might need to sign up for a trial in one month and then follow on and continue our learning in the following month. So be aware of that when you're signing up. I've had to sign up with a separate card that is fresh to Microsoft in order to be able to sign up to this trial. So let's choose start trial. And one of the reasons I'm choosing start trial is because I want to go into the next step, which is to cancel the trial and show you how far you can go with cancelling it before it stops you uh, using it. I'm just going to approve the Xbox payment there by the looks of it. All right, so you can see we have it all set up. I can just grab this username that I've got. I'm going to choose start using the trial. It'll take us to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And thank you for choosing Microsoft 365. Okay, now we get to install some apps. Spark, which says install Microsoft 365 apps, uh, add domains, add users. Now, in my course, you're going to learn all about that anyway, so I don't want to go through that right now. I'm just going to cancel that, save and exit. And now, the most important part of setting up this trial is to make sure that you aren't charged for it when you don't actually want to be charged for it. So the next step is to choose billing into licenses and just check what licenses we've got. You can see here we have one Microsoft 365 license. Actually, I've got 25. Now, I did only buy one, but 25 are available in the trial. That's important to see. So I'm going to choose that. Check what ones we've got. There we go. And I'm going to choose manage subscription details which you can also get to by choosing your product, but one way to get to it. I'm going to choose here and then edit recurring billing. Now, this is the important thing to read and understand and make sure you are doing the right thing. So this subscription will be bought on the 2nd of May, according to this. So in one month's time with one license and will be renewed yearly. Now, I don't want that to happen. This is a, te a test or a trial account that I want to cancel 
within a month. I'm going to choose off, which says let this subscription expire on the 2nd of May 2024. I'm going to choose save and it says are you turning off recurring, recurring billing and it will expire on the 2nd of May 2024. I'll choose yes, set it updated successfully and now if we go back into this subscription it should tell us that we are expiring in May 2024 and to buy a paid subscription when this trial ends turn on recurring billing. That used to be the default when you were setting up a trial with Microsoft and now it's the opposite. Be very, very cautious when you're setting up a trial because automatic recurring billing is turned on. So just to confirm that this is set as a free trial and even when I choose cancel subscription, if you cancel this subscription, your organization will lose access to these services and you won't be able to have a trial subscription for this product again. We recommend that you turn off recurring billing and use the rest of this trial instead. So I am going to leave this trial going for my organization and I have already turned off recurring billing. So that's exactly what we need to do. Oh, I do have a button which says extend trial end date. So you can extend the trial for 30 days still. That used to be an option on the 90 day trials. You used to be able to extend it for 30 days. And now it looks like you can also extend it for 30 days. So technically it's a 60 day trial if you extend it, but you can only extend it once. So that might be an option for some of the people who are learning the, the courseware I've put together and for other courses that you've got access to. Nevertheless, it's clear that Microsoft have made it much more difficult to sign up for trials and free subscriptions within Microsoft 365, which for learners and people trying to get used to the technology is a massive hit in my opinion. See you next time.